a function that allows. So um, when Mr. Wentz asked me um, to talk about what does a school, high school counselor do or a school counselor. So I'm going to touch on some bases. And so what do you need to become a school counselor? So of course, you have the school requirements, the testing, uh, a master's degree and at school counseling, and then of course the state and the internship that's required. Um, again, the master's degree in an area of study and process that drive the state requirements. And then there's four components, which is a human development and counseling theories, assessments, ethics, individual counseling skills, group counseling skills, family therapy, um, and then the internships that varies by state. And then of course the 600 or 700 hours, I had to do 700 hours when I did back in the day. So it was still a lot. Um, at the time I was a teacher. So I was kind of fortunate because I was teaching and I was able to do my hours with the counselors that were there at the school. So that was a big, a big plus because um, I was a teacher before a counselor. Um, so what's the difference between school counseling? Um, we're not clinical counselors. Um, there's different, there's like substance abuse counseling, family therapy. We learn those theories. We learn how um, that works, but not necessary is in, implemented in the school because we're more focused on academics and getting the student graduated and well-rounded for the real world, actually. So we do do some of those, but not on one-on-one -on -one like a clinical counselor would. All right, so state requirements, Department of Education. Um, the Department of Education regulates the school counseling. The licensure come from the Department of Education from the Nevada Department. And again, they require internships, 600 hours, all of the previous areas in academic preparation, the school counseling test administered through the Department of Education. Um, you do have to take a test, um, this is a practice, practice, sorry. And it's used to, um, for teaching licensing, because you do become licensed as a teacher. Like I said, mine's a little different because I was all, uh, was already a teacher. So that helped me. I didn't have to take, I just had to take the counseling section, but not the teaching license. So the Praxis exam is, is a teaching certificate or a counseling? Yeah, it's both. Okay. It's both. Uh -huh. So there's okay. component components of, in, in the test. So, so back on the times, um, just to interject a little bit, Dr. Martinez, mm -hmm. you couldn't be a school counselor without being a uh, teacher. That was just part of the requirements. In some moment throughout these years, that changed it. So everyone could become a school counselor without the need of being a um, teacher. Correct. Um, but then the state got concerned because they were like, so how do we know that the school counselors have uh, you know, knowledge on the uh, academic settings? So they made the school counselors take praxis tests, which are based Correct. for the teachers, along with the school counseling uh, test. Component, yeah. So Yeah, absolutely. That, see, I'm in the old school. Um, I couldn't become a counselor or I was able to, I should say, because I was a teacher. Um, you had to have at least three years of teaching um, to get your master's in, in school counseling. That was a big thing and it did change and it does make a difference. Um, I see it, not the new ones, not the ones that are coming in. They don't see the difference, but I've been in, I know 22 plus. So I, as a teacher, as a former teacher, I was able to understand not only the student, but the teacher point of view. And that helps to navigate the education, um, the well, high school or middle school. 
because unless you're in a in in a teaching, you know, you don't realize the uh, how what it takes to do um, classroom management, learning styles. When you have a student with a 504 with an IEP, a lot of accommodations that you don't if you just jump from uh, get your master's and go into counseling. And that's why, like uh, Mr. Wentz said, that's why you do the teaching part in the uh, praxis test. But it's not the same. I, I've had counselors that said, this is, this is, you know, they get out of the profession. They said, this is not for me. I, I don't understand why these teachers, unless you're a teacher, you don't understand. But there's some that are doing awesome. They're wonderful. They go straight to from masters to counseling and they have the heart for it and they they try to understand the teacher and or teach classes and then they understand oh this is that part that um they're missing but it's doable it's doable it's it all depends on the person so the functions of a school counselor dr martinez yes um, the webinar is interactive so i'm just gonna okay absolutely some of the questions that the students may have Okay. So I have one question here for you. What percentage of non-academic counseling would you say you do? Um, non-academic as a counselor? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I, I say like 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? And there was one about the 504, but uh, Mr. Sita actually answered that one. Okay, all right. So we do work with families, the school, the community, and especially, of course, the student, because I always tell my students, I have a job because I have students. <laughs> so I'm always grateful. I go, you guys, you know, you guys are, are my life because I want to help you succeed. So. And we help them with, um, I don't, I can say I don't have experience with the elementary level counselor, but I know they work more closely with the family than the secondary. We do too, but not as much as the elementary. Uh, they deal with a lot of um, family issues. We do too, but we send them out to the resources, but the, the elementary counselor deals with a lot of the families of course, connecting the families to the school and helping with the community that helps us to help the student and the family uh, to be well-rounded, to be successful in life. And of course, the student. The student with the social emotional um, succeed in school because it's a skill to be in school and have like our kids have eight classes and eight teachers and uh, our school is a little different because it's an uh, academy, so they they go into a program uh, with life skills, either construction, medical, education. So it's but when you go to a regular comprehensive high school, uh, the student doesn't know what they want yet, and that's why we're there to guide them and see what their strength, their weakness, and what they're passionate about in uh, in life. Okay. All right, I didn't put anything here because a day is different every single day and that's what makes it unique. Um, there's not one day I can say I repeat and repeat and I go like, no, no. So my day, I go in of course uh, and I look at my emails, make sure I don't have any emails from teachers, uh, any crisis or emails from parents that they need immediate help. So that's what I look at right away when I come in, my emails or uh, messages on the phone, make sure everybody's okay. And then I go on with my day. Um, either right now it's so different because we're all in remote learning and, but in, a, in our normal um, setting, um, every quarter in the semester, say there's first quarter, second quarter in the first semester, so every quarter, the counselors, we have duties to complete. For example, first quarter, we make sure all the schedules are correct, the classes are leveled, make sure the kids are not in Algebra 1 and then they're again in Algebra 1 and they already passed. So we make sure their schedules are correct and they're taking the right classes 
Are they honors? Are they um, um, AP, advanced uh, placement? In our school, we have dual credit, which through Nevada State, our students take English 101, um, US History 101 and 102. So when they leave our school, they leave like with 30 credits of uh, college credit. So we make sure they're, they're leveled. Um, if kids are didn't pass, say for example, they took algebra one for math and they failed, we don't put them again in algebra one, we put them in a credit retrieval, which is uh, through Apex. So it's an online self case so they can make up that credit. So there's a lot in every quarter. So that's first quarter we do a lot. We meet with the seniors first quarter, make sure they're on track for graduation. We make sure um, our 504s are on uh, what days they're due because we have to make sure the teachers accommodate the 504s, our special ed students, um, to make sure that their IEPs on tack with the, the teachers. They know we have to submit those to the teachers to make sure. Um, and then we have parents, students that wanna come see us. So we have an open door policy because we say your needs are, we wanna meet your needs right away if it's urgent. Um, you know, they come like the first quarter, you know, I don't like this class or I wanna do schedule change. So there's rules to that. Um, and then we, we help with orientation for our ninth graders coming in to make sure they're, they come in and feel welcome, feel supported that we're there if they need anything. And it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love my job. So, and then second quarter, we go into uh, PSAT testing. That's the pretest for the SAT. Um, all 10th graders take that. And then 11th graders, whoever wanted, wants to take that, they can take the PSAT again. And that helps them see where they're at with the scoring with SAT. And then they get prepped for ACT. That's usually for third quarter. Um, then we meet with our juniors second quarter, make sure they're on track. And what um, we go through the academic plan, you know, are they on the right track? Is that what they want? The biggest thing, of course, in high school is not the degree, it's a diploma, but then there's di different diploma types. You know, do they want the standard, um, the advanced honors, the advanced, or now we have the college and career. So the advanced ones, they require a 3.25 GPA uh, unweighted. So that's what we sit with them and say, it's, oh, I want the advanced honors. Well, sometimes they're at 2.5. And we're like, well, we can do the standard, but um, you, know, you can bring up your GPA. So that's when we meet with the juniors to make sure what uh, diploma types. And then in December, we meet with the sophomores. And we have one counselor that just deals with ninth grade. They're, she's very nurturing. She takes care of them because it's scary to be in high school for the first time. Um, and she does a, a real good job on that. So, but, so three counselors take care of 10 through 12. And it's a lot because we wanna make sure, like I said, they're on track for graduation. They're on track for the diploma they desire and make sure they're not credit deficient um, to get their diploma. So, and then fourth quarter, uh, we meet again with the seniors, like where have you applied for college? Um, did you fill out the FOSFA? Did you uh, uh, apply for scholarships? You know, what's your plan? We're always on them like, what's your plan? What are you working on? What's working? What's not? What do you need to improve? So that that's when we meet one-on-one -on -one with the seniors. And then after that, um, third quarter and fourth, we meet with the juniors and sophomores for pre-registration to start um, the next year, see where they're at also. So it's constant, it's constant. And with the seniors, make sure they're, um, they're passing their classes for graduation. That's a big one. Um, this year has been very difficult because we have a few seniors that we don't know where they're at. They just drop. They just like, we're trying to, and it's been so hard not having them live. Like, where did these kids go? You know, we got a whole, now that we're back for two days, the kids can come back two days. 
we have a lot of seniors that came back and said, no, I'd rather get out of the house and, and be here, you know, at least if it's two days, you know, so we're hoping that in August we, we go back five days. So we'll see. It's every day is a challenge this year. So, but that's my day. Um, like I said, we have our own duties for each quarter, how to meet them. But of course, when crisis come, that's priority. It's like an ER, whatever is urgent. And that sometimes takes up the whole day. When we do uh, suicide protocols, that's the ugly side, but we, we, we do have to do them. And, and so when we do those um, protocols, we, we have to have two counselors present. We got to get the parent involved. <clears throat> help the parent make, to see if they have health insurance, to see where they can get help, they can get counseling. So we don't do the counseling, we just do the protocol. And then we send them out to, uh, and then we have a social worker, so she's a big help on that. And we used to not have social workers in school, and now that's changing too, but we're, we're very fortunate to have her. And so, so it, it's those, never those social workers, um, excuse me for interrupting you, are no, those fine. licensed professionals or are those in a role of a social worker? They are professionals. They do hold a master's. Um, they are social workers. However, the school district went through a third party and they were um, their students who are getting their social work degree. So they are called um, safe professionals. So they're limited. On um, when it comes to the compared to a, a licensed social worker, so they're going more towards a licensed social worker because they're, they're a big help. They have been tremendous now with this COVID, it has been a, a big a plus in our school and all the school. Uh, so, yes, so they they um, so we send them to them with the families to with our social worker, and then she'll go from there. Um, but when she's overloaded, I mean, there's one for, we have what, almost uh, 1,900 students for one social worker. So we, so, we step in and help. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, a couple questions from the sure. students. The first one came from Billy and he asked, uh, are you finding it harder today in counseling due to the intensity of our situation with COVID-19 virus? Yes, it has been a challenge. Um, his kids are, um, when we speak, to, when we meet with them, because now we're meeting through Google Meet. We don't meet them in our office anymore. So we're meeting them for, like right now we're in fourth quarter. So we're meeting with, just finished the juniors. Now we're meeting with the sophomores. And they tell us, you know, I just don't have motivation. I, I, I get up. I don't, you know, same thing. And uh, it's been hard. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of kids are, are like, giving up, but then we have those that are high achievers. I, I look at their transcript and they did amazing. They're getting straight A's. They, mm -hmm. they actually didn't go back for the two days because they said, no, this is great. This is working. So yeah, it so that flexibility for some yes. people works, other people, it's th that social motivator is really a big factor for it's a big students. Factor. Yeah. Especially high school, they they want to be with their friends. That's where they, right. you know, they learn about themselves and their like and dislikes and the clubs. I mean, high school is a lot of fun. Um, so we have those that uh, wouldn't um, succeed in uh, face to face, and then when they went uh, remote, well, they bloomed. They they succeeded. They were like, whoa, I'm. I don't mind going to college and do everything online. So that has been an eye opener. Interesting. Too, yeah. So. It's, I think, it's, I think those of us that are educated more traditionally think, Oh, it's yes. tough. and then as I developed this online training program or degree program, I realized how much students really, especially of the different gener younger generation, they seem yes. to take to it a lot better and prefer it. And I can see there's a lot less distractions in some ways too, because uh, the, that social interaction, while it's beneficial in some ways, it can be very distracting um, and punishing. You know, if it's if if you don't have uh, yes, yeah, a good experience. They have to have self discipline. Yeah, and they have they have to on that they have to have self not not it won't work for the kid that needs to be told constantly and do your work and get up. Now what are you doing? They get annoyed and so they just like leave me alone you know and but you get those um i have students and they're in the informational technology program the it they're like because they're it and they are just like this is great 
and they're showing me like, guys, this Google me, where do, you know, like I'm just asking you, where, where do you find, you know, they teach me and which is fine, you know, but you're right. Um, I'm the old fashioned, old school. I, we didn't have options. Right. Was, you know, you went to, you learn to go to school and deal with everything. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there used to be, do you remember the old correspondence programs? Uh, I don't know if anybody, <laughs> any of my students knew about these, but these were um, by, by mail. So, you know, you'd get the book and yeah. you would, uh, your instructor would send you by mail uh, an assignment and you would uh -huh. complete it and you would send it back to him. And this is how it all went. And people got yeah. full degrees through correspondence. Correspondence, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it is, that was distance education back in the day. Uh, yeah. I believe I, I heard an interview with, um, uh, who's the guy, the director, uh, who did E.T. and all those science fiction movies, um, Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. He, he went to correspondence school for college, his college degree. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, there's another question here from Sherry. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do when parents refuse to get involved? You get involved in their education or the yeah, prices? Yeah, I think the, uh, the question is geared towards in, with the student, you know, like if you try to contact the parent and they're they just refuse to get involved. Okay, so there's there's two kind of parents. So if there's a crisis and the parent says, I, I they just want attention and I don't be bothering me and they hang up. So we have the legal 2000 and we turn it over to the um, our administrator and then they deal with the school police and, and the nurse and all that. So that takes off our hands. So then you get the parent that um student doesn't do good doesn't you know behavior doesn't want to do anything all he comes to school or she and 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 makes trouble and doesn't you know teacher can't get a hold doesn't turn in assignments doesn't do anything so as counselors we try to see how we can help the student find out the root problem of the of of the student's problem because it, there's something going on and usually it's something at home, something personal. Um, we had this poor uh, student that his parents divorced and they both didn't want nothing to do. So he was like, you know, we, we didn't find out till later. And so sometimes we become those parents. Sometimes we become that support that they don't have at home. And um, I, I worked at another school at a comprehensive, it was an academy. So those, those students, um, We've had girls that um, had a baby and thrown out and we nurture them all the way to get their diploma. And we see them now and they're, they're going to college and it's just, we have homeless students too, mm -hmm. that they don't, they live in shelters. We had a, a, a student that lived in the park. And so we, that was at the other school, not here. We helped them with uh, job placement. So we kind of take the kid and, and help if there's nobody around because some come on a company there 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 are title one hope students that they protect them so we we're the ones that help yeah there's a, a lot of um obviously as a seasoned professional you, there's a lot of um terms and vernac professional vernacular yes using. and so i'll i'll explain that as they go along because the, the students okay. have questions so uh, dr martinez mentioned an l2k or legal 2000 and that's um that's related to the administrative code in nevada that allows certain professionals to put a uh, an individual on a psychiatric hold for up to 72 hours um of course that usually lasts longer in some cases but it's uh it's basically from you know what we used to call committed you know that it doesn't really happen anymore yes. that's a much long, lengthier legal practice uh, process but an l2k i can't remember what it's called in california like a c20 or something every state has their own uh kind of name for this but this is a uh, if if the there's a psychological crisis and it deemed that the person is a threat to themselves or to the or others and or they're unable to care for themselves or their own safety um uh, that's something that uh, might be done, and it can it can happen to students, uh, teenage students as well, adolescents, children. Uh, not as co common because parents mm -hmm. usually have a uh, more control. Um, the other thing you mentioned was oh, I forgot now. I've been talking so much. Oh, okay. Thanks, Amanda. Fifty-one fifty. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Um, 
There's another question here from Aaron. Um, as a counselor, what is the approach when graduation rates begin to drop in community? Uh, is there data collected and certain issues identified to ensure that issues addressed in the most successful manner? Is a counselor involved to this extent? Yes, so we, um, our school has been, for the last three years, we had a 100% graduation rate. Well, congratulations. Yes, and, and we're a magnet school, so it's, the kids want to be there. Like I said, I, I another school, I, comprehensive, it's not that way, but so we have had 100% because the whole school's involved, the teachers, the the administrators, um, the counselors, the social worker, we make sure we we help those students. Like right now we have like three, like I said, three, three seniors that we don't know where they're at. And all they need, all they need to graduate is English and government because okay. they have all their credits. And so we don't know what happened. If, uh, uh, we don't know. We're, we're in, right now we're in uh, against the clock right now with that. But um, we also have summer graduates, so if they don't finish, they can go to summer school because our kids have so much credits that they earn by the time they're juniors. All they need when they go to senior year is government and English. Um, so we take care, but we do have data. We didn't always have 100%. We would have like 98, 92. And what did we do? We collected that data like what was happening with the students. So we, they, the school now, we, but the, the the administration implemented the APEX, which is like I said earlier, it's an online credit retrieval. And we have our own at our school. Before they would have to go to night school to make it out. They still have them, but we make it convenient for them to take it there. So what we do is take away an elective. They don't need the elective because they have so many elective credits. So we take away an elective and we put them in what you call a virtual lab. And that's where they work on the apex. There's a teacher there that monitors their, their progress. Um, if not, if they're not completing that class, they call the parent, they call us. So it's like, everybody's on them. So they, they can't move. They, you know, we're here, we're not gonna let you go. So, so the so apex that, is, is that like a GED or no, they, they'll still graduate with an actual high school? Yes, program. so they credit retrieval was a retake that class they fail. I see. Instead of going like night school or, I mean, they go to summer school, like juniors can go to summer school to catch up by the time they come to senior year. And that's what we do. Right now, we're gonna look at all the sophomores that need, that didn't pass and see how we're, we have to have a plan. That's one thing. Always have a plan um, for each student. Um, so that way we know, uh, there's also a Nevada Learning Academy through the school district. It's an online school but it's through the district and they offer also credit retrieval. Everything's online. Um, so they can do it like after school. Um, if they need more classes, they can do it there. Or if they want to get ahead, they like, I had one student says, no, I want this elective, but can I take the Spanish online in the summer so I can free up an elective? So we work that way too. So yes, we're on them. <laughs> We don't let more, them go. There's a few more questions, um, sure. but maybe I'll, uh, I don't want to keep interrupting you. So you, you no, tell me. You're fine. You, okay. Um, so Jenna Marie asked, do you think it's easy for kids to fall through the cracks? Uh, yes. Yes. If you work in a comprehensive high school, it is. Yeah. It what does comprehensive our, mean? Exactly. Comprehensive is like, for example, I'm in the magnet um east career and technical academy so they're in a pathway like i said they either like they're, a major. Uh -huh. they're in a career path mm -hmm. in a comprehensive your regular high school okay um uh, 9 through uh 12 they take their their classes but they're not in the track like for construction or um education none of that kind of goal, just a general high school. a general yeah, yeah. that's what and, we and call so what, what is what are the things that you see most often that attribute to kids falling through the cracks the caseload or caseloads you've got too uh, many students and not enough time or not enough time um so each counselor right now we hold 400 students each okay. each so and we have to know like 
our kids. We have to know who's a credit deficient, but there's a plan. There, there's, um, we do our spreadsheets. We, we keep track on those. And the ones that fall into the crack are, um, say in another school or regular school, high school, is that they don't show up and you don't find out or the teachers don't reach out and let us know. If we don't know, we tell them, guys, we don't read mics. So if you don't tell us there's a problem or the parent or the parent comes at the end and says, well, why nobody told me? And so we try to always communicate with the teachers like, hey, if, this, if you have a student that's not going to class or you see something's going on, please email us. And that's how we keep, we, but they do. I mean, some teachers, they're new or things happen and this kid just drops, doesn't, doesn't come back. And the attend, so then it turns over to the attendance office and they have the, um, the truant officer. He's the one that goes out and finds out why the kids are not attending school. And it goes by and goes by, and before you know it, it the year ended. Mm -hmm. So, or or the very transient too. That's another reason. Okay. They come three weeks and then they disappear, and then they're talking oh, the attendance. But after I think eighteen days, they they withdraw them, mm -hmm. and so we don't know where they go. Um, and then they come back. So those are the ones that fall into. The car. Yeah. I see. It's very hard. It's I mean, because you know, if you don't have the parents cooperating or monitoring them, and the school um, doesn't uh, always have good eyes on them, because if they don't show up, you never even know the student exists. Right. So yeah. yeah. Um, thank you for answering that question. There's another question here from Jessica. Um, mm -hmm. How do you professionally address the students when they come to you about current stresses they're experiencing with COVID restrictions and limitations? Uh, in, uh, currently in, affecting their home life and academic life. What can you do on your end to help them succeed through a trying time like now that we're experiencing? Yes, yeah, so we as counselors, we check out, we send videos to them saying how to get a hold of us. Uh, we send Google forms, like, how are you feeling today? Do you need help? Do you need to talk to somebody? Um, I haven't heard from you. Um, oh, it's a, so it's like a survey that tracks your interaction. Yes. So we email the, the kids the form, the Google form. And if they don't answer, we're on them like, hey, um, we email them or we call home or we call the parent and everything okay. Uh, they'll sometimes say no. There's been a lot of death in their family, a uh, job. They've lost their jobs. Um, today, actually, I met with one of my seniors. I haven't heard from him. He finally came the two days. And I said, uh, where have you been? I said, we've been trying to get hold of you. No answer. You don't fill out the form. He says, well, my dad uh, lost his job and my mom doesn't work. So I started working in construction and construction. They make good money right now. And he's in the construction uh, program. So he says, I've been, I would have, I had like a thousand left to pay off my car. And I, I, I did that. So I'm helping with bills. And so I, I help them and I say, look, communication is a big thing. If we don't know what's happening, we cannot help. If you just disappear, we assume you don't care what happened. I, we don't know. I said, but you communicate. So I had him there because uh, he, was, he was there for today and tomorrow. I said, right now, you're going to email your teachers and explain your situation and ask them what you can do, what, what assignments you can make up. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And he did, and he felt much better. So we try to find out what's going on and then help them with the emotional part because we know that there's a lot of a lot going on with the families and the, and the students. So that's how we approach it. We try to, we don't attack them or make them feel guilty or, or like, you know, scold them. We're like, hey, we're worried. What can we do? What can we do to help you? ease your, your load or what's happening because they're going through a lot at home that we don't know. And I just want to add up to Dr. Martinez and for everyone, Dr. Martinez is describing what for our program will be the case management and monitoring of clients where you are rich, you look for the support, you connect your clients with the support. In the school setting, you don't connect the client because the student is 
not the client, but indeed it's a consumer of a service, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in reality, the, the monitoring, the, the guidance that you provide enacts this idea of I'm managing the case, I'm helping the student. And just, and just imagine to be managing 400 clients yeah, that's, um, I'm putting it in client, but in reality, this is how it feels. 400 of them. And then imagine if it, 10 of them disappear in you. Right. Everyone is panicking. Like, Where are the students? <laughs> and, and just going, picking back in on our own questions, uh, the data collection, this is data that it's used in a school for the advantage of the students in terms of what is happening. You are not attending. And this is actually part of, of, of the accountability uh, element into the school counseling settings. You got to know where the students are. You need to look at the attendance records. You are actually in charge of looking at your students' attendance records as well. <laughs> and, and imagine to track everyone, your 400 students. Um, That's a big hence one. this kind of a limitation in terms of, of what kind of, uh, of counseling we can do, right? Imagine if you sit for an hour with every single one of them. If it and we, mm -hmm. we wish we could sit with them, each one of them, you know, and not only in crisis. Um, that's why when we do credit checks, which is credit checks means when we evaluate their transcript and say, okay, where are you now? What, let's look at, we do sit with them one-on-one. -on -one. Right now it's Google Meet, which is nice. They, I get to see them and I, I said, you guys don't know how excited I get to see you guys, <laughs> even if it's to the screen. And the first thing I do ask them like, how are you doing as a person? How are you doing? How are you hanging in there? Uh, what strategies are you doing to, to cope with all this? Because it hasn't been easy. You know, um, and then I go from there and see what, what, you know, but it's only the time I can give them is like 10 minutes mm -hmm. to go over the transcript, 10, 15, unless they have more questions, of course, I don't cut them off. Okay, your time's up. You know, I just, I, I listen to them, but um, and some I can't get a hold of. So I worry, you know, like you need to, um, I need to meet with you because I'm, we're scheduling for next year and I don't want to give them an elective they don't want. And I email them like, you haven't scheduled. Do you want me to pick your elective? You know, you're not going to be happy because once you're in there, I can't take you out. We want, I want you to be happy. I want you to take control of your education. And that's what we want to do for them to take control of their education. What's going to make them happy. What's, you know, we don't like to be telling them like we give them the form, like this is the, the road you need to take. If you want this diploma, that's up to them. But um, but you're right, Mr. Wednesday. I wish I could sit with more than an hour with my students, but there's no time. But you do the best you can, and and it's a rewarding job. I, I really love it. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, there's two more that popped up. Um, having uh, this is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, having teaching and counseling environments changed quite a bit over the years. Oh, excuse me. Have teaching and counseling environments changed quite, quite a bit over the years? Is it tougher? Um, it, tougher, <laughs> I'll say one thing, tougher in technology for me, it has, because everything's gone on technology. I'm the old fashioned, but I, it's helped me as a person. But in regards to the student, they are dealing with more difficult times than, than before. And, um, it's there. I, I always tell them, you know, you're in a, in a, in the world right now. I said, you're making it, you're doing great. You're being, re, you know, resilient. You, you're, you're, this is going to be history someday for you. And you're going to help others what you went, you know, how you manage and, and cope with it. But they are coping with a lot of, I mean, compared to 24 22 years ago, this is, it's, it's a whole different ball game. And, and, but not only that, but like talking about technology, uh, forget about me, but you know, they're living that technology with the apps, with the TikTok, with the, you know, they kids tell me, oh, Miss Facebook is old fashioned. It's for you guys, the old people. I go, okay, well, 
well, at least we're working on, you know, but they're into the everything else that it, before you know it, there's a new app, there's a new system. You can't keep up with them, you know, and, but they're good. They're good. And, and so, sometimes that has its challenges for the students because mm -hmm. they want to be, you know, how many likes they go into that part and, and that emotional part that kids didn't deal with that. Right. Years, it's so. changed the constitution changed. of society. Um, and it's yes. happening right in front of us. Yes. And, and it keeps moving. So yes. I can imagine growing up must be difficult for them to find their footing. Like, where do they belong? What do they want to be? When when I was growing up, it was a, it was a little simpler. Uh, it was more limiting, but at the same time, it wasn't as unstable. Yes. Yeah. So we try to help our parents uh, bring in um, uh, workshops. Because parents don't know what to do anymore either. They're, they're in a, they don't understand their, the world their child is living in with, they have to have a device. And now it's a must, now it's a necessity. It's not a, a luxury anymore. And parents now um, have it more difficult because they kind of lost control. There's like no control. Uh, you know, like when I tell the parent, well, your, your student's failing, you know, a teacher email and goes, wow, he's always in front of the computer. But what is he doing in front of the computer? That's, you know, he says, I go to work. I can't go. No, I understand. Um, so it's harder for parents to parent. They have to parent a whole new way than when we did, when I raised my kids. Um, so that is a challenge. That has been a challenge. And uh, I guess we're going to keep getting challenges. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so the parents have to step up and, and say, okay, it's not working the way I used to. You know, the way I'm used to doing things the way I was raised or the way I think it's supposed to be that that goes out the window. Now I, I said, you guys need to grow and accept what's, you know, that's your child learn to, to help your child navigate. Cause it's hard for them even with that. So we do have workshops for our parents. We have, um, uh, once a month we, it's called coffee with the counselors and we bring up subjects. We help them to learn how to read a transcript, um, about cyberbullying, um, help your child, you know, understand your child emotionally, what they're going through about COVID. So, and again, it's it's been challenging for the parents because we meet through Google Meet. We're not in in a life like mm -hmm. we have been the past year. So I think we're all just growing. <laughs> we're all yeah, just we were forced into this world that we, we, we didn't get to ease into it. It's like- No, oh, it's it was overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um uh two more questions then i'll let you continue so okay. we'll the time and I, and I really do appreciate the students your questions and your interest and that's i think as a presenter it's very you know it shows that you guys are paying attention and interested in the topic so um this one is for from um marjane i hope i got that right uh do you find it difficult to to not take your uh work home with you yes um, I find myself um, doing a lot of my work at home only because when I'm at work, I'm there for the kids. And so if there's crisis or if there's um, uh, lesson plans we do in the classrooms or that's to me, that's priority. But I still got to go through the transcript. I still have to do the other. I can stay late, but I do bring it home. If you're talking about the emotional part, um, I've learned through the years because as a teacher I used to take that home a lot and I would I I leave it at, at work because I know when I come back the next day it's going to be there it's not going nowhere right so um unless it's been interesting though because now that we're we've been uh, online um it kind of the work is at home because if I get an email and it looks urgent I don't wait till the next day. I act upon like, okay. And I know we, I like, we're all like connected now, but after like eight o'clock PM, I close everything. I just like, I got to get my rest for the next day. But, mm -hmm. but this year has been a little different. It's kind of been home too, because we've been working from home too. And you can't just close it at, at two or three and say, okay, no, because you're still working and and then you get emails or uh, reminds because we use the app remind and kids have questions and we want to be there for them and it's not only us it's it's the whole school that's there for the 
the mm. parents. Okay. Um, all right, please continue. I, I, don't, I don't want you to run out of time and <laughs> give you a chance. Okay. Uh, give you all right, so our two major framework for the school counselors is uh, RTI. Um, does everybody know what RTI means, a uh, response to intervention? Uh, yeah, you might want to explain that a little bit. Okay, so RTA is like, uh, it's a pyramid. Let me see, let me see. Let's see if I have it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so there's three tiers. And so the first tier is a whole, it's everybody, what you provide for everybody. So we provide, we sit one-on-one -on -one and go over their um, academic plan, their transcript, and what they want to do after high school. So that's everybody. Um, and then and then we do also, it's called Success Academy. So we um, present study skills, how to study, um, time management, um, to be successful in the classroom if they're. So tier two are the kids we, we help that are at risk of failing or they're not doing good in, in classes. So we get like we get data and we see like, for example, first quarter ends, we look at all the core, the math, the English, the science and the social studies. We see how many kids have failed because um, they need that. That's a requirement. So then we we create a group from those kids and then we give them a small group That's we start doing the study skills. Um, we do it for four weeks. Uh, those are lessons for them. And then, so that's a group, a smaller group. And then the tier three is individual. So that could be uh, like our social worker deals with, she meets with some students uh, dealing with depression, with anxiety, uh, with failing everything. Because once they're dealing with that, of course, their classes fail. So from that group, we see which ones are not, it's not helping no matter what we're doing. So then we refer them to the social worker. It could be the emotional part or home situation. And that's the tier three. So that's how we do the RTI, the tier ones for everybody, the tier two small group, and then tier three's individual one-on-one. -on -one. Um, is this a common model or is it something that the district has in place? Uh, uh, both. Okay. Well, and may I just add, Dr. Martinez? Sure. Uh, this is just uh, kind of a picking on Jessica's question on the chat. This this RTI model is a way in which we can visualize supporting the four hundred individuals mm -hmm. that you have under your care. Uh, so. The grouping that you may see in the schools are as a way of taking a breather. So we provide certain strategies for the entire 400, but then we start actually grouping those that may need you a little more. Right. And then we group those that are in absolute need of you. So instead of utilizing, for example, all your energy in the 400, we begin creating the groups to focus on those that are in high need. So level uh, tier three, for example, you will mm -hmm. have someone that is a suffering of anxiety or, or, or of anxiety or panic attacks on almost daily basis. So you kind of make a priority to say, I'm gonna meet with a student once a week to check in. And in a steal, I can care for my more my 400 students while I provide kind of a priority for those in need. And, and more need. So in a way, the response to intervention provides the opportunity to handle that amount of students. Mm -hmm. But even at the face of utilizing these type of models, uh, there is still many students for 100. <laughs> so <laughs> Jessica, in response to your question, um, because we do follow ethical, gui ethical guidelines and codes as well as the school counselors, our quality in providing services remain high. So we are responsible. How do we know? Because at the end of the day, you are evaluated. 
<laughs> you do have a supervisor that comes and check on you and says, oh, why didn't you do the protocol of societal protocol, for example? Or why is the, you know, 200 of your students failing? So this accountability factor comes into play. So RTI provides that, uh, that ability for us to be able to navigate and handle the amount of- The case mm -hmm. Yes, we do have to answer for all our 400. Like what plan do you have in place? What interventions have you put in place? Um, like right now, the, I have a, like two seniors I said, before and um, the intervention, I am reaching out. Uh, I set up parent-teacher conference with all the teachers, see what intervention we can do. So they, they still have six weeks to make up work. Um, so those are the interventions I'm doing to make sure that they graduate. Um, but yes, we I have to answer, what are you doing with these seniors? Why are not they not? Um, passing or why. So we are responsible for them. So this is, like you said, this model helps us uh, handle and, and kind of control the whole 400. And so we don't lose our mind, <laughs> but so, but it's, it, it's, it's scheduled. It's, um, it's structured. I should say it's structured where it's manageable and it's, it's not, it works. It really works. All right. Any other questions I can go on? Yeah, please continue. There's, a, there's some right. others, but we're just going to have to kind of. All right. So we go by the ASCA model. Okay. So that's through the American School Counselor Association. Um, so there's these four domains. Um, and I'm going to go through each one of them. The assess, deliver, define, and manage our program, our counseling program at our school. So we define, we go, we have student standards. So the, there's mindsets and behavior for student success, and that's K through 12. And that's for college and career readiness for every student, which is the bottom of the tier for everybody to have that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the professional standards, uh, our ethical standards for school counselors that we meet, and then our professional standards. And like, like Mr. Gwen said, we are accountable for all our caseload, whatever it is that's whatever case law we have that we're responsible and like the standards uh, for the professional also um, like I continue taking classes like this last semester I took family engagement so that gave me ideas okay that's how can we improve family engagement in our school so we define the, the student standards and the professional which is us um then we manage. We, as a counseling department, we sit down and we write down our beliefs, our vision, and our mission for our program. Like, how are we servicing our students? So our program planning consists of school data summary. So we go by uh, what the school data has, and that's how we uh, plan our student outcome goals. For example, if um, if the kids, uh, if we have say 60% not passing English, well, the administration takes care of the educator, but then we, we take care of the intervention and in helping why they're not passing and make goals for the that year, make goals for that year. And then we do an action plan on that. And then we, we sit with our administrator in a conference, like we present our plan, like, okay, this is the school goals. This is what the, our team's gonna do to help with those goals, okay? And we have to um, show the use of time, like where does our time go? You know, we do have to twice uh, each semester, we have to turn in like, what's your day like? What do you do with your time for a whole week? Uh, and, and we write it down. And then calendars, we have, like I said, I was telling you earlier with the quarters, quarter one, we take care of this quarter two and see if we covered everything. And then we do an advisory council, which consists of a parent, administrator, uh, the counselor, social worker, and a student presenting our program. This is what we're gonna do this year. These are the goals. This is the goal we want to achieve. 
And then at the end, we see our data. Did we reach our goal? Do we need to tweak it? Do we need to adjust to, you know, or did we just, did we fail? <laughs> we didn't do good. You know, how can we improve? It's always about improving. And then we deliver. So this is a direct student services. Direct services include instruction. So we do lesson plans um, in the classrooms. Uh, it can range from like study skills, ACT, testing, SAT, college and career, uh, military, that's included too. And then we, of course, we do the counseling one-on-one -on -one when um, either when they have, or they just wanna talk or when we sit with them with, okay, what's your plan? Because it's always the academic, what's your plan? Make sure they're good emotionally um, or whatever they're going through, that's the counseling. And then the indirect services, we do consultation with our admin, we collaborate with them. And then of course our teachers, they send referrals to us and we help with that. And we also assist, we don't coordinate. We used to before the ASCA model, but we assist with the testing. So like the ACT testing is school-wide. It's all the juniors. So we help with proctor, proctoring, or we help uh, proctor the AP testing, which is coming up in May. So those are, those are indirect. We're not working, we're helping them to achieve something else, but that's indirect. So that's how we deliver that. Oops. And then assess. It's very important we assess our program. Um, the school counseling program, the assessment. So at the end of the, the year, like for example, next, the end of April, we're going to sit as a department and say, okay, what have we done this year? What data do we have? You know, like we're trying to see how many kids did each counselor actually uh, was able to meet with them through Google Meet. You know, what percentage was that and how many we didn't uh, and then for what reason. And so that's the annual results report. And from there, that's how we, we plan for the following year. Uh, we look at our professional standards, uh, if we met with it. And then we have the Nevada uh, Educator Performance Framework which is part of all that. And um, we kind of like grade ourselves, like, okay, how did we do, you know? And what needs to be improved? So, so that's very important, always assess, always, uh, not only the program, but ourselves as counselors. I mean, how are we doing? How are we feeling? Are we feeling burned out? Uh, do we feel that, you know, I have too many students and, you know, do we like, we have a, a counselor that um, she went through health issues. So we picked up, we said, no, take care of yourself, um, get better because you don't need that load. You know. So we helped her, we took some duties away. And then we look at our duties, like, what do you wanna take care of next year? What do you want? What do you wanna get rid of? And that's how we plan our, 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 our uh, program. Cause we have to be well too. It, it, we have to support each other. We have to want to be there and we have to like our job or, or miserable because I, I always say we live here more than we do at home. So we, we have to um, like it and make our life uh, manageable and, and look forward to go to work because it's awful to go to work and you're not happy. That's just, right. it, it shows. Mm -hmm. All right. Is school counselor providing clinical counseling? In a way, but not not in. Um, we're not licensed for for therapy. We're we do more, like I said, academic, the social. But we refer to the resources through the community and through their health insurance. So, but we're there to help them, but not like a clinical. But it depends. I mean, like Mr. Wentz said, you still see them. You still they're still your clients. You know, they're still. You're still responsible for their well being. So, all right. Questions? Yeah. So, uh, 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 there's a few. Okay. Uh, how would you handle a crisis? This one's from April. How would you handle a crisis situation off the clock as if a child fully trusts you and only calls you for help? Okay. 
So the good thing that the district has provided um, safe voice, mm -hmm. okay? So the kids know that when there's a crisis or a parent, they call the safe voice. Mm -hmm. And so the safe voice uh, goes straight to the district and then it goes to the administrator. They usually handle it. And if, if something that they, they wanna include us, then they, they text us or they email us. Usually they call us and then we get involved. So that's it. So there's a system in place. Okay, so you guys have a, a crisis. Um, Hotline. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the next one, Laura asked, do homeschooling families have resources like this? Uh, let's see. Is there support for guidance available? For homeschoolers? Yeah. Okay, I, I can, um, my daughter is homeschooling her children and I guess they have a support um, group that she joins. I think it's, I think you need to join a support group um, in the community, like parents that are homeschooling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's groups that help each other or they reach out to uh, community resources. So that's mainly, cause I know my daughter belongs to like three groups where they do, well, not now, but they used to do field trips so they can get the, they can socialize or um, they, they have, uh, I, don't, I can't remember right now, but she, she has an agency where they call, where there's free services for, for um, that type of crisis. Okay. And so who manages those? Is it the district or? The homeschooler? No. 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 So these They're are on just, their own. These are, yeah, they're, these are just groups that have formed to support. Yes, they form on their own. Yeah. Okay. Um, second, okay, uh, Brandy has a question. Has secondary education goals changed from just going to college to adding trade school goals and other goals that do not include college? For the students or? Uh, yeah, it sounds like, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm reading it for <laughs> That's a little confused, but. So not every student wants to go to college. Um, they, a lot of them do want to go on the workforce. Mm -hmm. And so we help them with that too. Um, a lot of them don't, they rather go to the military or um, they, just that military or, or work if they don't want to. Um, they also go through apprenticeship if they want that route too. Um, they get paid, that one's nice because they get paid on the job training until they, they pass all their um, requirements and then they get paid um, whatever they're paying at the moment. So what our goal is for them to do something after high school, whether it's work, military, uh, be successful and be a, a good um, citizen in society. That's, you know, that we tell them that too. And, and uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. they don't know what yeah. they want to do when they get out either. Sometimes yeah. they don't, they're like, I don't know what to do, you know? So they, they said, well, you got to work. <laughs> so yeah. you got to help yourself and you'll learn skills. And, um, and then maybe later in life, you know, the light bulb goes on. I said, it's okay. It's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And, and I think that based on uh, um, Aska, we um, school counselors are mobilized not only to inform the students about the college opportunities, but to inform them about other opportunities which they can actually meet their needs, such as mm -hmm. trade schools and all that. So yes. we need to follow the ethical guide, guidance that we need to, the things we need to do for the students. And part of this um, needs that we have in ethical guidance is to inform them of other multiple possibilities of everything they, they can do. And I believe, uh, you know, Dr. Martinez is in a school in which um, construction, welding, mm -hmm. IT, all these programs that are not so quote unquote college um, mm -hmm. programs are being introduced now. So I know other schools have um, cosmetology, for example. So indeed, trade schools and other opportunities are present now in the goals, in the way we plan or in the way that is implemented in the schools. 
Yeah. I wanted to add that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that um, we tell them it's okay if you don't know what you want to do when you grow up. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's, but you do want to try different things either. Even if you work in a Burger King, then you realize you don't want to do that for the rest of your life. That's okay. That, but that's, I go, every time you do something, it's a learning experience to help you that eventually it'll open up. But we do help them with jobs too. There's a lot of, um, like there was a raising canes that they would actually call us and say, Hey, do you have students that they did intern and then they would hire them. So, and then they said, Oh, we're not going to college. We're going to stay yep. with <laughs> raising canes. Oh, okay. That's fine too. But yeah. So. And just, just to add one more comment, Dr. Martinez, what you're commenting is actually this uh, beautiful element of the counseling that we learn in the schools. We don't tell the students what's right for them. We offer and guide them in all the opportunities they have. So in that way, we remain not judgmental. Like when you sit right. with a client, <laughs> you don't want to tell them, you need to do this because this is how it is to be. So that is part of the beauty of the school counselor. You as, to, as a school counselor um, remain flexible and willing to support the student in whatever goals they have. And Dr. Martinian mentioned something at the beginning. The goal is for them to take control of their education. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna add the next sentence or word and their lives as well. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they, need to, they need to go back to that. Yes. So there is another question that is um, very interesting. Um, all of them had been, but this is personally close to me. How do you combat compassion fatigue? How do you combat the, the, the burn out of work? The burn out. And, you, and um, I, I mean, I'll be honest, um, there, there is burned out, but um, from my experience, um, I always try to take care of me and make sure I'm okay uh, to be ready for them. And if it takes um, a whole weekend or, um, or a mental day, you know, like, you know what, I'm going to call in today. I'm going to take a minute. You know, you take care of yourself because you have to take care of you. If you're burned out, you can't give something that you, you don't have anything to give. And it is, it is, there are times um, where you do feel burned out, but you take care of yourself in mentally, you take care of yourself physically, making sure you're well, your your health is good. Because when your health is not good, it, nothing's good. You know, not nothing functions um, the way you want to. And, and the frustration comes in because you still have to do the job, but then you're not feeling well, you know? So um, I do find it, and, and Mr. Wentz can attest to this, that um, as a department chair, I try to bring the group together to give our self therapy. Uh, that means like having lunch together, you know, um, it's just venting and helping each other and joking about it because then we feel better and helping each other, have each other's back. And when you work in that environment, it's amazing how far and how much you can do together. Mm -hmm. But I've seen departments where they're just like, no, can't stand each other. And I say, we live here. We have to, we're like, it's like a home. You have to get along with whoever you're living with, you know? And in the sense of um, taking care of each other, basically taking care of each other um, as a group and uh, yourself. Now, I, I must say, as an elementary uh, counselor, I don't know how they do it because they're a uh, one-man show. They're, they're it. They're, they're like quasi-admin. They, they do a lot of stuff that uh, you don't have anybody. We bounce off each other with ideas, uh, how to do this. Hey, I don't know how to do this. You know, can you help me? And, and so, it, but when you're alone, it's, it's hard. Yeah, you, they, I think, they must manage because they a lot of them like they rather do elementary than secondary. I think they they help they have a group where they call each other and and help each other with that. But 
the burnout is there, but uh, like I said, I it help it helps me when I take care of myself, and I know when I'm getting to that point, like um, I can tell another counselor, hey, I don't feel up to this. Can you do this? Or I owe you one. I'll take care of that when you're not. Yeah, and that's how we that's how we get through. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a good team that too. And, and of course, mental health dates are absolutely beautiful. You just take <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel like you don't show up the next day. And, and this is super important for all of us to, um, in the human services field, because you know, but one, because you are studying it, and second, because you are going to enter a career in which it will require your self-awareness mm -hmm. to be aware and recognize, I can't give anything else. I'm, I'm done. So I need to take this time. And that is absolutely fine. And just to supplement what Dr. Martinez was sharing, I did experience a beautiful group cohesiveness and, and, and in and in and itself that represented the support. Even that, that half an hour that we used to sit and have lunch was indeed kind of a, a therapy session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And work relationships are so essential to yeah. mm -hmm. your, not only your well being, but your uh, ability to enjoy your work. Yes. Um, and, and compassion fatigue can be a real impediment to you enjoying your job if you start to lose if you don't have enough energy to take care of yourself you're not going to have energy to give other people um and i find that it's so important to find some system of belief faith philosophy that sustains you um if, if I, i'm not a, a person i you know i'm baptized roman catholic i haven't been to church in 20 years but uh but those those things are in me still you know uh, and they do, they affect uh, my values. They affect uh, how I view myself, see myself in the world and also what, how I want to be in the world. So, um, so what I've encouraged students, students to do is to, if you're, when you're going into this field is find something that helps bring you back into equilibrium, back into balance, ground you and say, you know what, I can do this. Um, not taking things too seriously. When I worked at the psychiatric hospital, I never laughed so much in my life, not at patients, but at the situations that we find ourselves in. And we use humor and levity to, yeah. to combat the seriousness of what we were experiencing daily. And if you don't do that, uh, you're in trouble. And I saw a lot of my mm -hmm. colleagues, you know, get sick in different ways, addictions, um, physical illnesses, mental illnesses. That's so true. Uh, uh, there is a question from Kimberly. Do you do behavioral interventions or is that done mainly at the limiter level earlier on? If you do, can you briefly tell us what uh, that will look like? So in high school, we usually, we used to have what they call deans and they were in charge of behavior. Um, so the teachers usually send the kids to the dean's office about the behavior and they contact the parent. But then when, um, then they call us to say, hey, can you talk with the student, um, see what's going on? Um, so we do try to find out why they're behaving the way they are. Um, like I said, it could be home life. It could be they don't get along with the teacher. Just because, you know, and I tell them, you don't have to like your teachers. You just have to do the work and pass the class um, and learn what you can. And you're not going to have this teacher forever. And it's, and then we go into the um, relationship and how to get along with others. And I said, that's life. Life is going to be like, you're not always going to like, you know, everybody. I said, but, but learn to respect um, and get along goes a long way. I said, in life, and you're not going to be miserable. I said, I, do you like to live miserable? And like, well, no. I go, well, then if you want them to change, you know, no, you have to see it a little different, I say, because then if you're just walking around always feeling that everybody's doing things to you, then you're going to be, you know, be miserable. So we try to work with them with on, on uh, relationship, getting along with others, seeing a different perspective that everybody sees the way you do. And and then we make a plan. Okay, what do you do when you first go in? Do you do you talk? You know, maybe teachers fed up. They're dealing with forty kids or thirty. 
you know, and everybody's talking. And I said, so what do you do when you go in? You know, let's, let's backtrack. And so we have, okay, what's your plan for tomorrow? And then we have them like, come tomorrow and let me know how that worked for you, you know, and see what other um, coping skills we can, you know. So we do that on that, on the behavior. And just to add supplement, Dr. Martinez, Kimberly, in, in his, it depends on the grade level, but in high school, we are more geared towards providing the student with those techniques and strategies than literally going into the classroom and do any type of behavioral observation to create any type of behavioral uh, approaches in the classroom. So instead, we will sit with the student and say, okay, so you get distracted. Have you tried to use the headphones? Have you tried to move the seat? So it's more that work with the student than per se the um, kind of the pure um, behavioral approaches that you will see in very early on. Um, I have worked in middle schools and I can tell you that I did utilize the very kind of a purest behavioral approaches with some of the students. Um, but in high school, I rarely mm. did that. It was more like work with the students than implementing it, any type of strategy. Um, yeah, because yeah, because uh, elementary their behavior is um, when they're misbehaving. Well, they're not following the rules, basically. But um, you do have to get the parent involved because we don't know how they behave at home, and to them it might be normal to do that, and they don't know that when you go to school it's a different. There's different rules, and they're just learning that, but. Um, so they, elementary works more with the family on the behavior. So we're, uh, Dr. Martinez, we're almost out of time. Okay. Um, it, it was such a wonderful discussion and the students are obviously very interested in all these questions, more questions that we can answer. Um, but I wanted to let everyone know the password for the meeting. Um, this is, uh, you'll put this in your assignment and submit it for credit for, for attending tonight's meeting. Um, if you, of course, for those students who can't make the meeting, we're, we have, we're gonna do a video recording it, so we'll be able to, um, uh, they'll be able to participate that way. But the password is peeps, 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 you know, those little marshmallow treats. Um, so just put that in your assignment and then submit it, and then we'll give you credit for attending. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Dr. Martinez for coming. You know, she's had a full day of work, and then on top of that, comes and is generous with her time as a professional. I really do appreciate it. And I want to tell you how, how grateful I am that you um, were able to come and, yeah. and share your experience uh, as a school counselor with our students. Their associate level um, and bachelor's level human service uh, students. And I'm sure they see the connection between their coursework and study and practicum and the kind of work that you do every day uh, serving your students at, at the school. Well, thank you. It's been an honor and anytime I am. I love my job, so it's, uh, it's I'm passionate about helping others at every level. So, Great. thank yeah. you, Dr. Martinez. Yeah. Before okay. you go, could you kick the meeting back over to me? I think you're yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, All right. Have a great night, Dr. Martinez. If there's anything we can do for you, we're at your service. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah.